um, went on there. But let me say this here now. Coming today, this contentious meeting tomorrow in St. Vincent between the president of Guyana and the president of Venezuela, uh, uh, President Nicolas Maduro. Got to pronounce it correctly. Nicolas Maduro. I don't understand what this meeting is about. The meeting is organized, I understand, by Ralph Gonzalez. Just say Ralph, who well, accused of rape. A man who is um, self-serving, in my view. This is a man who, um, I think it was early this year, Gainagi National Award, the second highest award, Order of Raima, he get. Sometime last year, Venezuela gave me a national award as well. That is after he went to the United Nations, I think after or sometime, he went and he represented Venezuela's case. He batted for Venezuela, he lashing out, he, he lashing out at America for the sanctions that were imposed on Venezuela. He went to the United Nations and he batted for uh, Venezuela. Now, this is the same Rav Gonzalez, who supposed to, well, he's a, the, the um, CELAC, he's some pro temp chairman or president, and then he take this meeting. But it is the part of this that um, amazed a lot of people is when Ralph Gonzalez announced that this discussion for this uh, meeting was taking place in September of this year. So the people got this um, speakeasy meeting going on, and nobody didn't tell Guy the public, nobody didn't tell you that um, um, Ralph Gonzalez talking to Rifanali and Maduro about our meeting. So then, when the thing was leaked, he wrote to the um, to President Irfan Ali, and somehow the thing got out. And then he jumped and he had a press conference, and he said that the meeting, of the, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss this border issue. President Ali maintains that the land border, and I noted the same land border. So I asked, I had to ask the question whether, if you're saying the land border is not up for discussion, whether the maritime border is up for discussion. I don't know. But the question was asked. He's saying that is not up for discussion. In the meanwhile, the Venezuelan president has made it clear that that is the purpose of the meeting to discuss this um, border controversy. The president, our president, has said repeatedly that the matter is before the International Court of Justice and they are the ones who will decide. Venezuela has said that, look, we don't recognize that the, the International Court of Justice as jurisdiction can resolve this matter. And they have been calling for dialogue all along. They have been calling. So this situation, as I said, is a win for um, Nicolas Maduro and Venezuela because no sooner than the letter was dispatched to President Ali and he accepted the meeting, Maduro told his people that Guyana has now decided that the only way to resolve this border controversy is through bilateral discourse. In other words, Maduro is saying to his people that Guyana has abandoned the ICJ um, arrangement. That is what Maduro said. And therefore, I have a strong suspicion that our president is walking blindly into a trap set by Nicolas Maduro and Ralph Gonzalez. That is my view. That is my view, that he walking blindly into this trap. And I have said before, I don't believe that he has the experience. I don't believe that he has the temperament to deal with such a complex issue. This is not an issue about PVP. This is not an issue about Irfan Ali and Barat Jagdio. This is about issue about Guyana. This is about issue that involves all of us Guyanese. And we have a man, we don't even know what is the agenda. Because it is clear, it is absolutely clear that there's no agreement on what is to be discussed, none whatsoever. So you're going into a meeting of this nature. You don't know what is to be discussed. You have what you think you're going to discuss. Ralph Gonzalez has his own agenda. And Nicholas Maduro has his own agenda. So what is the purpose of this meeting? You are going to stare one another um, in the face. That is what is going to happen. No agenda. Who, 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 the, who the delegation? What type, what type of experienced um, diplomats and perhaps even legal people you have on this um, delegation to meet with these people? I think the president said that he was advised by senior diplomats and the legal experts that he should have the meeting. That is, as, as far as I'm concerned, that is Baladash. The matter is before the ICJ. 
the United Nations Secretary General put it there. Because this talking that Maduro wants took place for a number of years and did not get any place. So the Geneva Agreement says that if you talk and you can't get through, let the United Nations Secretary General determine how this matter is going to be resolved. And in 2018, when the Guyana government put it to the United Nations Secretary General, the United Nations Secretary General said, let the ICJ decide. Venezuela, on more than one occasion, said that they don't re um, recognize that the ICJ has a jurisdiction to handle the matter. The ICJ has ruled on at least two occasions that they have the jurisdiction to try to, to deal with this matter. The ICJ only a few weeks ago made some interim orders, which Venezuela has clearly flouted. Venezuela has made move to annex Essequibo. They appoint a general to be the governor of Essequibo. They tell the people who are doing next work there that they must leave within three months. They are so supposed to hold a census in Essequibo to, to issue identification card and, and all of that to Guyanese living in Essequibo. All of these aggressive action, which amounts, in my view, to a declaration of war. And you going to sit down and meet with this man without any preconditions, as far as I see. That is what is going on. Again, Mr. Conway, I got to always call you to see if you can help me out there, man. So please, maybe you being um, very experienced, maybe you can help me to, to tell me what is the purpose of this meeting that is to be held tomorrow um, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Tell me, please. If you're going there with any meeting, with any agenda, it means to say that you 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 have no no purpose, and you shouldn't be there. On on the other side of the thing, Madura, oh, what's his name? Going there with a seven point strategic plan that he uh, that he announced recently, including annexing of of Venezuela, of um, Esequibo, including appointing a, a major general to take command, including giving out citizenship and ID cards to get any, to all those who live in Esquivo, including threatening those poor uh, Exxon Mobile and others, and also our local miners that they can't work after they got packed up after three months. And if you want to work here, you, you got to get permission from Venezuela. All those things, he has not, he has not denounced anything. He didn't pull back on, any, on anything. He's sticking to those things. And we go in the present game there with open arms. He going and talk to his brother. And who is going going with? Understand it's it's, it's a secret because they don't want to um comp compromise national security. So they won't say who would be going with the president. He doesn't have an ambassador in, in, in Venezuela to be to, to, to be to be to be with him. You know, it it it's boggles the mind. That the president they go in there without an agenda, and the Venezuelan president has spilled out his, his, his agenda. And Gonzales also say what they would be the, the, the discussing. And yet still our president rushing there to use a, a one a fancy term, rushing there with breakneck speed to have discussion with, with a man who wants two tours of gun. No way, no way, Paul, no way. Yeah, because when you look, when you look, at, again, I said, oh, no, the delegation, eh? um, if at all, I hope you're not going as a one-man army. But when you look at the foreign minister, you Tad, foreign secretary, Robert Passad. Then you have the director general, I think she is, Elizabeth Harper, former prime minister, candidate. Maybe she's the most experienced diplomat in, in, in that group. Who are they? I don't know who is going because they haven't announced that. And except for national security, what security? What security? You go into a meeting of that nature and you are not announcing who are the people who are going to accompany you? You're not announcing what the agenda will be? How do you go to a meeting without an agenda? How do you? And the experts that he said he consulted with, I have consulted with some people who are considered expert too, and they say no way should, a pres or should presidents be meeting like that. 
So for all those who say, well, Ramphal advised me to go, uh, buddy, that got to be jackass advice because Ramphal and all of these seasoned diplomats will know that meetings of that nature start with the, the lower people. Part at the lower level, work its way up to maybe to the foreign, um, to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and they trash out all the controversies and all of those things. So by the time they had, the president should meet, by the time the president meet, all of these nitty gritty are, are sorted out. That is how the people say that this thing should work. That presidents don't go to a meet a meeting just like that on such a very consequential issue. The people in the ministries and all of those people will be will meet. The press, those people are going to meet, sort out what the agenda will be. What they, and, and that is a critical issue, what they're saying. So if that had been done, we're not going to get to the stage where the day before the meeting, we all know what the agenda is. And I noted too, somebody mentioned it too, I noted that initially they had said that the president of Brazil was to go there as an observer. And it was either yesterday or the day before, we, I noted that Brazilian president is no longer going there. And he's not even sending the, the, the foreign secretary or the man in charge of foreign affairs. Some one of the junior people going there to observe. And I think I read this morning where the Prime Minister of um, Trinidad and Tobago, Keith Rowley, Dr. Keith Rowley, should be, will be attending this thing. I see again, this meeting seems to be a well-laid trap set by Ralph Gonzalez and um, Nicholas Maduro for uh, Irfan Ali, President of Ghana, to walk in. It's like the spider setting the web for the fly. That is what uh, is happening there. The spider setting a web for the fly, and the fly is going to go. Um, that it, well, somebody said the Barbados president as well. Those people are self-serving. Let me tell you, when they come to CARICOM, as it currently stands, you can't really trust these people, especially when it relates to this Venezuela border issue. They are looking after Petro Caribe. Petro Caribe is what they are interested in about the oil that Venezuela supplies to the um, CARICOM members at a cheap um, price because the thing started on the 2005 with Hugo Chavez and it has um, died away. Died away because of the sanctions, I think, and all of that. And only last year, November, I think it is, it has been reported that Venezuela sent a shipment of fuel to St. Vincent. At the time, the, 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 the sanctions were on, and last year they sent a, a shipment. Only this year, October, I think it was, Mia Motley, the Prime Minister of Barbados, is now trying to sign on to Petri Curry because they were not a member of it. And for those of you who don't know, it's a Canto Chavez. I mean, you want to talk about it some other day. When it came in 2005, was a concessionary arrangement to CARICOM states. I think there were 17 CARICOM states who signed on, including Guyana, where they're given oil, fuel, at a, but I'm not sure it's a concessionary price, but they had to pay 60% upfront and the next 40% over a prolonged period of time at negligible interest rate. So it was a sweetheart deal. And then the thing flopped for some reason, because with the sanctions and all of that, they are now trying to revive it. They are now trying to revive Petro Carib. It's there for you to read. And therefore, Ralph Gonzalez, Mia Motley, Scarab from uh, who is the chairman of CARICOM, those people are looking into their, the interests of themselves and their country. That is my view. That is how I read it. So when they jump on the talk and they try to live sweet with Venezuela, is that because they believe Venezuela has any um, proper claim to our um, territory? It's because they want Venezuela to continue to supply them with this sweetheart oil deal. That is the purpose. That is the purpose of them um, sucking up to, um, to, to Maduro. That is what it is about. You can't trust them. You cannot. So despite the fact that um, President Irfan Ali believed that he's so sweet with Ralph Gonzalez and he's so sweet with Mia Motley to the point where he doesn't make catfish curry and send for and all of that, those people looking after their interests and interests of the country. To the extent where when statements are issued from CARICOM, from the Prime Minister of Barbados and others, 
they are portraying this thing like if Guyana, they're equating Guyana with Venezuela and saying that both countries must tone down. Tone down what? Venezuela has clearly been the only aggressor in this whole thing. Venezuela has been the only aggressor. But yet still when they're issuing statement, they feel compelled to go and say, um, oh, both countries should um, seek to um, have peace. They should tell Venezuela to back off. That to to tell Venezuela to respect the ICC um, interim um, judgment, which say they should not make any move, and even the ICC uh, dance. No, none of the two countries should make any move to um, aggravate the situation. We have not done so. We, the Guyanese, have not done so. Venezuela, the ones who had the referendum with the five questions to decide that they're not going to recognize the ICC's um, decision to say that they are going to now annex Esquibo. They're going to redraw the map to include Esquibo. They're going to have census in Esquibo and issue identification card to people, Guyanese, who are in Esquibo. They are the ones who have been aggressive. They are the ones. I said ICC, ICG, I mean. Is it cricket in me when I say ICC? I, I ain't like they, I, I, I'm not going to say you did not hear me. If I did say ICC, I apologize. I meant ICJ, the International Court of Justice. But if she has a cricket man and cricket in the, in the, in the um, air, maybe I did say ICC. I not doubt you. I did say ICC, but it was a slip of the tongue. It was not the fault of the mind. And I would not tell you, my good students, that you did not hear. You have to listen. You did not hear. I accept that I made a mistake. I accept. CC, let me hear you again on this thing before we move on. Man. The, the thing with the president that is bothering me, you know, is that he's jumping over the place, running about the place. He has not yet made a substantive address to the nation in relation to this matter. Here he's been as a some speech there, some speech at the national stadium and all kind of thing. The president must substantially address the nation. And in addition to that too, the National Assembly, according to the Constitution, although the president is not a member of the National Assembly, the Constitution gives him the authority to call them and address them, or not even address them, also to send a message which they have to discuss. The nation is, is not only at sea, the nation, the, the nation is, 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 we are deep in the ocean. We don't know, the other guys don't know what really is going on. And the president has not been acting like a statesman. He has got to let us know what's going on, what is his plan. He gained to that country without a plan. Gain at the airport there with, 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 without a plan. As we say, Brazil pull out, send the low life people, the low, no, sorry, can't say low life, low level people to, to, to deal with, 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 it, with the situation. We don't have an ambassador in, 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 in Venezuela. Um, the, the, the whole thing is not being properly handled, not properly handled. And then to, to crown it off, we want our soldiers, our joint service, to defend our borders, and you give them 6.5% increase. One would have thought that you would have created incentives for them, for them to want to go and serve at the border, and also to look after their family when, 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 when they are away there. Things like separation allowances and, and, and those kind of things there, that you give them a nice package, persons who go in and serve there, that others would want to join the, would want to join the joint services. We want to join the army, we want to join the police force and then go go and go and solve the because they're paying them in good by we're getting good money. But right now the morale of the ranks them low. And I could tell you, and I don't want to talk on the air in terms of the support that the squatter is giving to, to his people them on, on the border. It is shocking to know what he gave them in terms of anyway, let me don't know that, but it is shocking to know what, what he gave them. So we need to do far, far better, far better than what we're doing, Paul. It's, it's, we, we, we're not responding as we are to. And it's time that the president stand up as a man, say no to CARICOM, say no to others. This is Guyana I'm dealing with. I have a mandate from, 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 the, from the 